Hello, I'm Todd Paropasic from the Erie Art Museum, and we're here with another round of Meet the Artist. Um, we're going to get kind of get right into it, uh, continuing with our graduates from the Year That Was Missed series that we have displayed. And this week, we have a printmaker, and that printmaker's name is Marco Sanchez. So say hello, Marco Sanchez. <laughs> Hi guys, uh, thank you for having me. Um, couldn't be there physically, but you know this should do for now. And so, why don't you uh, why don't you start out by telling us a little bit about yourself? Um, well, again, my name is Marco Sanchez, and uh, graduated from Edinburgh University uh, with my MFA just this past May. And as the title of the show suggests, you know, the year that was missed, we all us grads couldn't um, have our thesis. And I actually set my thesis in my front lawn. Um, I bought some PVC piping and just made a quick makeshift sort of gallery space outside of my, my apartment. That's really cool. That's really cool. Why, how did that end up? How did you get there? Well, um, <laughs> rather naturally actually like yeah. organically being from el paso and i don't know if it's like a mexican culture thing that we like hustle um i kind of don't like use to use the term hustle but it is what we do and just try to some people you see them like just doing that to make ends meet um and i was thinking of street vendors which is sort of a series that i'm gravitating to now um like ambulant workers um right and you know and i've done several pop-up shows so i was like well hell like there's a lot of people walking by everybody we're in the middle of a pandemic people are walking around like why not set it outside and i was just waiting for a sunny day and i yeah. said the pvc piping like the wall or the hanging um installation piece and I set those up and I set my wire where I was going to hang, um, you know, the prints. And on a sunny day, I started setting them out there and, and you know how rainy days are. So it took oh, yeah. me three or four days and to try and coordinate that with my committee. So we could have my thesis presentation at said day. So we still had a formal, if you will, uh, PowerPoint presentation through of Zoom. Course. Um, and, but I also show them, you know, um, the setup that I had outside. So you, you, you mentioned, uh, how you're a printmaker and I, I think I gave you a little intro, uh, your intro to you as a printmaker. So why printmaking? I uh, describe the journey that you took to, I guess, become a printmaker. Um, well, I was doing a whole lot of nothing up until my sort of late twenties. Uh, I was bartending for many, many years and traveling, yeah. backpacking overseas and in Mexico and here. Um, and my grandfather is actually, was actually a painter and a printmaker. He just passed um, two years ago. Um, but um, I wasn't doing much. I was doing photography as a hobby, but not really taking anything seriously. And I didn't know what I wanted to do career wise. Um, my undergrad is huge on it's one of the best engineering programs within the Southwest and yeah in the US. Um, primarily, I believe for Latin Latin American students, but so I knew I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to do business or accounting. I didn't want to go into like K through 12 education. So I didn't know what I wanted to do. And one of these times that I was traveling, I ended up uh, visiting my grandfather who lived in southern Mexico in, in Michoacan and I stayed there for four days me and my best friend who I was traveling with and just seeing him work uh, you know it just sort of sparked it and he asked me he's like hey what are you doing sitting there come help me work yeah with this piece and you know I told him like no I don't I don't paint um, sure. and you know, so we went back and forth, like, no, I don't do that. And he said, like, come on, just help me. Don't be lazy. What are you afraid of? I was like, okay. So I did a bit and decided, hell, like, why the heck do I not try this, go to school for this? And so I enrolled in, in school and I actually started as a painting and anthropology major. Um, and I was in my second to last painting course. 
in my third anthro course when I took my first printmaking course and I just fell in love with the materials and the process, uh, the multiple processes and methodologies of printmaking from relief print to etchings, to lithography, to screen print. Um, and I, that sort of put painting on the back burner too. And, huh. um, you know, paint, you can paint anywhere, but printmaking, you need machinery. And I actually have a huh. press here that I bought. Yeah. Here, or, um, I believe in August of last year. And okay. the laptop right now is sitting on a new press that I just bought last week. What's your favorite step in the pre uh, process of printmaking? Um, I primarily work, I guess, with relief and etchings, which is all you have at the museum. You don't, you don't have any lithos sure. or any screen prints. No, so, we, yeah, we have the etchings and the relief prints. Etchings yeah. and relief, yeah. And so relief, whether it's linoleum blocks or wood blocks, um, but I also love etchings and it, that it gets a little more complicated because of the need for acids and a proper studio space. And at the moment, I, my studio space is the garage, as you can see. And I have this press here. I have like my inking table right here. I have another press right here. And then I have a, <laughs> yeah. a 66 Mustang here that serves as my drying rack sometimes. <laughs> um, so yeah. it gets a little complicated, but I, I, I think that's my, my favorite. Um, it's a toss up, I think etching takes the lead by a tiny bit. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the series you have on display with us? Um, well, the series I have was part of my thesis and my thesis was titled Saint Superheroes and the Demonized. Hmm. And it was essentially okay. started because as a reaction to, you know, all the divisive rhetoric and sort of a bit of ignorance and sort of hateful rhetoric and, and very just angry, um, I guess to say, to keep it short. And my initial response was making work that was sort of in the same canon, like a little angry and reactive. And right. I decided to kind of quit that. And instead of doing that, I wanted to dignify and put people like on a certain type of pedestal who had been attacked and, and marginalized by some of this rhetoric um, and just sort of bring attention to certain uh, social issues that happen both here in the U.S. and in Mexico. I'm from the border. I'm on the border. So I see a lot of that on both sides, you know? Yeah. All right. So that actually, you kind of led right into the next question I have for you. Um, specifically, I, something that struck me about what you have, uh, displayed at the art, Erie Art Museum is the, the kind of the duality of the art that you have on display. And in your statement, you me mentioned how you grew up in this split world living on the, uh, Juarez El Paso border. And I, I kind of want to know how the, that that feeling of being divided within yourself, how has that influenced uh, your work? That is kind of a, it's not a complicated question, but I think the duality of living here on the border and, and part of my statement was that, you know, I'm a part of two countries, I'm part of two nations, two communities, um, and have immediate access to both where which is funny too though because this on this side you know on this side of the north side of the border the mexican influence is very heavy and then south side like the american influence is very heavy so there's a bit of of a mishmash in both places yeah that it kind of does become at, at, a, at a certain point like one community but also you know two um and one thing I said in, in my statement was like, hey, I kind of feel like, I, granted, I'm not part of, of, of what I'm going to mention, but I feel that being part of two communities of two countries living on the border, it's kind of like a, being a child of divorce. And by that, I mean, I love both countries like I would both of my parents or like I do both of my parents and they have great, you know, things to offer 
both nations, but there's so many, so many wrong things that would need to be addressed and that need to be changed. Um, and again, that's kind of one of the things that I'm trying to do with, to show with my prints and the triptych itself is about violence against women, which my hometown of Ciudad Juarez, Mexico is known as the, unfortunately it happens too much that it's known as like the capital of femicides in the, in the world. So where most femicides occur and that's what that triptych is about, sort of trying to wow. empower, you know, women and, and a bit of like homage to Artemisa Gentileschi's piece and, you know, um, of, of uh, Judith slaying uh, Holofernes, so. Yeah. Uh, what, what does the future hold for you? What, what are you planning on doing? Um, well, I had my first job interview uh, for a shop in LA. The first part of the interview went great, second part, not so much. So I don't think I'll get a <laughs> follow up interview for that, which that's all right. Yeah. I have a, I've applied to a couple other um, institutions at uh, education. Yeah. I, I would definitely like to be in academia. Um, but I also have a, a prospect uh, project for to take over as like director of a, another print shop that just started and it's sort of huh. in limbo um, because of the person opening it had you know some personal challenges arise and right you have to kind of drop the print shop for a while and everything's in storage and um, I was introduced to her via email and then we just had a, a good conversation last week and I from what I gather is that I'll be taking over this print shop and sort of taking on what her view was for the shop and then adding, you know, what I also want to sort of marry like her idea and my idea right. to kind of a, like my ideal print shop would be so. Yeah, well, that, that sounds really exciting. Mm -hmm. So, um, well, that kind of brings us close to the end, but I have to, uh, I wanted to, I had one more question for you. Um, I know that I, you know, sent you the questions beforehand, but there's one that, uh, I mean, at this point, I've asked every uh, artist that I've interviewed so far it, this question without sending it to them. So you're not alone. All right. um, you've studied art in what form, in some form for how many years? I started in 2010 when I formally, when I right. decided to go to college. So going on a bit over 11 years now, or 10 you, years, on 11. studied art for 11, 10-ish years in yeah. some form or another. Well, then you should definitely have a very uh, good opinion on this. Um, <laughs> in your opinion, what is art? Well, art is an expression of either self or to me, it, art is an expression of self yeah. or our environment, whether it's natural or internal, whether it's physical or internal. Um, and it's just an outlet of for ideas to be executed. Wow. All right. That was uh, clear, succinct, and uh, thorough, actually. Yeah. I like it. I like Thanks. that. I, that that's that your uh, your eleven years of study are showing it really <laughs> it really is. So uh, before we end this, and you know you go off to your busy life and I to mine, why don't you let people know where they can find you? Uh, sure. Well, my Instagram is I guess where I do most of my my I guess posting most of my work, which is uh, on paper and and canvas. Um, all together. And then I do have my website, which needs to be updated. And that's marcoprintsanchez.com, um, which I'm in the process of documenting all my work, all the new work and, and the work that I did in uh, for my thesis in order to, you know, update it. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, thank you, Mar Marco, for uh, stopping in and having a chat. No, thank you, Todd. Appreciate you having me. And yeah, everybody yeah. try and go see the the show. Yeah, everybody come see the show. Um, thank you, uh, members and 
guests and uh, community members and friends of Marco and the artists in the year that was missed and all sorts of galleries. Thank you for uh, supporting us and we'll be back uh, sometime in the future with another one of these interviews. See ya. See ya, Don. Cheers. Cheers.